Hello, I'm Annette Kelsen. I'm a professor in rhinology and vascular malformations at Unser University Hospital. The title of my talk today is Hereditary Hemorrhagic Telangiectasia, abbreviated as HHT. This is more than a bleeding nose. What an ENT doctor need to know about HHT and why? HHT is a rare vascular disease. It's hereditary, autosomal dominantly inherited, and there are three well-characterized subtypes. It's hemorrhagic with epistaxis or bleeding for oral, from oral mucosa, GI tract, skin, or arteriovenous malformations. And then there are the telangiectatic lesions, which are dilatations of the vessels, the postcapillary venules, which may enlarge to arteriovenous malformations. The disease is rare. However, population studies have shown that 1 in 6,400 persons has HHT. We all know the epistaxis patient, but when should HHT be considered? HHT should be considered if the patient has recurrent episodes of epistaxis. The epistaxis episode starts normally in a young age, but may start at all ages, as shown in this figure of 318 Danish HHT patients. HHT should be considered if telangiectatic lesions are present. You should look for these at the fingertips, at the skin uh, of the face and around the mouth, in the oral mucosa and, of course, in the nasal mucosa. HST should be considered if there is a family history of other HST manifestations, as, for example, family history of nosebleeds. So always ask your patients of their family history. HST should also be considered if the patient has had cerebral abscess or cerebral infarction. These are signs of PAVM, which are very common among HST patients. Around one-third of HHT patients has PAVM. These may cause paradoxical embolization, migraine, hypoxemia, and clopping of the fingernails. This leads us to the diagnostic criteria of HHT, the Coursal criteria. They consist of four criteria. Three or four are present if definite HHT, while Two pr uh, criteria present is possible HHT and one criteria is unlikely HHT. The criteria are nosebleeds, which should be spontaneous and recurrent bleedings, telangiectatic lesions, multiple on special locations, lips, oral cavity, fingertips and nasal mucosa, visceral lesions, gastrointestinal, pulmonary, liver, brain or spine, and family history, one first degree relative with HHT. So what is the role of the ENT doctor in diagnosing HHT? Well, ENT doctors are often the first doctors the patients console, consult, and ENT doctors have the expertise in diagnosing the nasal mucosa. So ENT doctors can prevent severe morbidity by referring HST patients for screening and treatment. HST is a vascular disease, so HST clinical manifestations may occur in all parts of the body. It causes epistaxis with anemia and social disability. It causes telangiectatic lesions in the skin, for example in the fingertips or in the skin of the face, and these may cause bleeding, cosmetic concern, and pain. Telangiectatic lesions in the GI tract, tract may cause bleeding and anemia. anemia. Arteriovenous malformations may occur in the liver. Here they cause shunting and pain. Arteriovenous malformations may occur in the brain as cerebral arteriovenous malformation. They may cause bleeding and epilepsy. And as already described, pulmonary artery venous malformations may cause hypoxemia, polycythemia, migraine, paradoxical embolization as cerebral abscess or apoplexia, and 
in some rare cases, even bleeding. And these patients carry a serious risk of having, for example, a cerebral abscess. We have looked into the Danish population of HST patients with macroscopic PAVM, and we found that 8% of them had a history of cerebral abscess before they were referred to the HST center. This is 400 times the risk of the normal background population. We have looked into the survival of the HST patients in the Danish HST center during the last 20 years when the center has been working and we have uh, treated the patients for PAVM and for uh, bleeding episodes. And during this period, we compared the HST patients with 218 controls. In the beginning, there was a tendency toward higher mortality among the HST patient. But during the observed period, we found that uh, the patients had the same survival as the controls. May this may be a consequence of the treatment the patients received at the HST center. Patients live with HST and they may live long if diagnosed and treated. We can help them by taking care of pulmonary AVM, anemia, epistaxis, GI bleeding and other clinical manifestations. Just to summarize, HST should be considered if the patient has recurrent episodes of epistaxis, if telangiectatic lesions are present, if there is a family history of nosebleeds, and if the patient has cerebral abscess or cerebral infarction.